Facebook soon is December 3rd, quarter 24. Um, can my fine students remind me what school-wide event occurs next week? Because it'll be week five. Okay. Something gets sent home. Progress, progress, report. progress reports, right? Uh, what thing worth 20% of your quarter two grade is due tomorrow? Been talking about it all week for the past, actually, past like three weeks. What are you talking about? No, no. no, no. Uh, the conclusion. And conclusion and analysis, right? Um, so the conclusion and analysis to your science fair project are due in your PowerPoint tomorrow. Um, it is worth 20% of your quarter two grade. Um, so if you're looking to have your progress report be glowing, golden, and wonderful, then obviously you'll have that done. Um, you know, and if not, then you might decide to take a vicious beating at home instead. Um, all right, so yeah. today we're talking about viral structure and transmission. Let's look at those words from a more academic lens. What is the word we've been using to describe parts of? Thank you. I'd like you to modify this statement to use the word anatomy instead. Right? We're making the jump from our middle school language to our high school vernacular. Um, so you could put structure and then anatomy in parentheses, or you could put anatomy above or below it. But either way, you want to represent that since we're talking about something that has um, organic molecules that it's anatomy. We're talking about a structure. Um, and just some more basic vocab. What does it mean to transmit something? We're talking about viral transmission. To send. Very nice. Right? So let's just make sure that we are familiar with this piece of vocab as well. All right. Now today we are talking about viruses. We're talking about their structure. We're talking about how they reproduce. We're talking about all the things that they do. And then we are going to build a model virus. So we're going to be making a virus out of pipe cleaners that you'll get to take home. And if you are the type that celebrates Christmas, you can always put it on your tree or you can give it as a gift. Really? Yeah. Isn't that the, like, you know the episode of Jimmy Neutron when they went yeah. <laughs> Right? You guys remember that this was like the little object. They were floating around in there and they'd grab onto the cells and like infect them and stuff. Um, right? So we're going to be um, modeling viruses today. All right. So we have a very common expression these days in reference to sometimes music or videos, what does it mean when something goes viral? Everywhere, all over. Everywhere, Everywhere all over, right? Meaning that it, that. Spreads. it spreads, right? So think about this idea that like, you see this video, you think it's amazing, it's changed your life, you tell your friend, your friend sees it, they love it, they tell their friend, then all their friends tell their friends, and you know, a few days later, everyone's talking about it, right? It has spread from person to person. All right, and then, uh, Speaking of, you ready? Let's have our quote for the day today. Yeah. All right, so, um, Eric, if you could read our quote for the day. like virus. All right, so let's take a moment and think about this. Right, so as, as a communal species, as a social species, is it true that your friends, your family, people you come in contact with, might share your feelings on um, certain situations or scenarios. Yeah. Like if you're afraid of something, can you introduce that fear to them? If you're angry about something, can you tell them about it and make them angry too? Yeah, yeah right? So emotions, just like viruses, can also kind of be transmitted. They can be spread from person to person, um, which is why it's always really important to have a positive attitude, right? If you find that your friend is afraid of something, don't feed their fear. Help them overcome it. Be their immune system, right? Help them fight past their fears. Um, perhaps if they're not doing their homework because they think it's too difficult, they're afraid of it. Say, listen, buddy, you can do it. You're wicked smart and stuff. Um, all right, so, and then tonight's homework is page 71 and 2, the further challenges section. After we finish today's activity, you'll look at these questions, and you'll be able to do them quick as a whip. Right, so everything we covered today ties into tonight's homework. If it takes you more than five minutes, I'd be stunned. It'll take you longer to open the book than it will to actually write the answers. Um, all right, so um, with that, let's move on to our first activity. Um, we're going to be watching a short video, four minutes long, showing how viruses work, and we're going to answer three questions about it. Two of the questions are review questions from a previous unit. So uh, part of what we're going to start to see in our course 
is a lot of what we've learned so far creates the foundation for what we're going to learn later. So we'll always be revisiting um, some topics. And as always, if where else can this homework be found? Okay. On the website or always on the board on the inside of the room. Right? I know the site for boards are blocking now, but you know everything's always written everywhere. Um, these are for you guys to reference so you know how to, you can see like good and bad conclusions and analysis. Um, I'm also after school today, if folks want to come and use the computers and get my loving guidance, I'll be available for that. And bringing me a small treat would really help the situation. I only expect venom from you, Ezekiel. Um, all right, so, the, uh, all right, let's move on. All right, so, um, what we're going to do is, like, like I mentioned, we're going to answer these three questions. What I want us to get started is I'm going to give you a STEM to answer these more efficiently. Some of you have that packet. You have these question, questions already written. Those of you who do not, underneath your activity, please write how a virus works. So underneath your activity, write where you wrote your homework, please write how a virus works. Um, all right, so please write underneath your activity how a virus works. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a route um, to start each of these questions so as the video proceeds, we can answer them more quickly and effectively. You do not need to write the questions. All right, so for number one, so under how a virus works, under number one, how does a virus sneak into the cell? Please write um, viruses enter the cells by... Viruses enter the cells by <coughs> so viruses enter the cells by and that was our sentence stem for number one and for number five for number two what does the virus use the host ribosomes for? Our sentence stem there will be the organelles called ribosomes. The organelles called ribosomes. Some of you might already be able to complete this sentence as this was something we covered before, but you'll keep that a secret for now. Sure, the organelles called ribosomes. Does anybody mean to spell organelles? Say what? All right. Um, the organelles called ribosomes. The organelles called ribosomes. Oh, wait, or did you ask for the spelling? All right. Um, and for number three, we're going to start that sentence off with, so given the rate of replication, how are we not killed by the virus? Right? Um, you can say that the virus, or one, one virus, can make thousands. One virus can make thousands. We're just leaving it at that for now, and then we're going to answer it as we go. All right, cool. All right, so um, from the top, Devon, could you read us the sentence then for the first one? Virus enters the cell by. Virus enters the cell by. Um, Victoria, could you read us the sentence then for number two? How do we start that one off? Organelles called ribosomes for number two. And Nishla, why don't you set us up with number three? One virus can make thousands. One virus can make thousands. Awesome. All right, great. Um, so we're going to watch our video. When you see the answer for number one or hear it, how does the virus sneak into the cell? Say, pause, and I'll stop the video. So let's say that this guy has the flu, could be any flu, and here's a droplet from his sneeze containing, if you move in and take a really close look, you see each one of those little purple things is a virus. And there are a lot of viruses floating through the air, some of which go inevitably up this unfortunate man's nose. How did that guy feel when you ripped off half of his face? It was interesting because we did it while he was sleeping. 
<laughs> okay, I am talking with medical illustrator David Belinsky, who designed this video for Zyrus a Research Company. So here comes the virus, and it's going to land on one of this guy's throat cells. So notice it's covered with little yellow knobby things. You, you call these keys, right? Those are the keys. Yeah, this is a key, this is a key, this is a key. Okay, if the keys on this virus happen to fit the locks, which are those little uh, purpley stick-uppy things on the surface of the cell, if there is a match, the cell, watch this, welcomes the virus in. And what's this? This is the welcoming thing. They all interlock. All right, nice. All right, so what was our answer there? If the key fits the little... Excellent, right? And thinking about yesterday, we talked about, um, or Tuesday, like antigens, antibodies, they're all made of what? What's that special molecule? Yeah, like most of the our living matter in our body is made out of. We eat meat to get it. Proteins, right? So if the protein key, like Denisha mentioned, if the protein key on the virus, uh, what was the beginning of the sentence there? And just so by its protein key, its protein key, matching our cells' receptors, so by its protein key, matching our cell receptors. So what we're saying is that, you know, our cell, like anything with a boundary, right, doesn't want everything to get in. But this virus has the key to the house, right? It has a key that matches the lock, right? So its, pro its protein key matches the cell receptors. Um, and folks might remember receptors back from chapter four. If you don't, there was that model out in the hallway. Um, all right, so let's continue on. Um, again, the organelles called ribosomes link with each other, and they pull this membrane down into the cell, and down it goes deeper and deeper, and that welcoming structure disperses, and the virus capsule bursts, and out comes the secret recipe for how to make more viruses and those little noodly things. So this unsuspecting cell, has been tricked into guiding these virus recipes right into its own command center, the nucleus. So in they go. And they are immediately recognized by this big pink molecule, which is a mini factory. Yeah, what is it doing? It threads the nuclear material, the, the instruction code of the virus, through one hole, and out another hole comes a brand new instruction set so it's a copying machine, making copy after copy after copy of virus recipes, which then go out of the nucleus to little chefs, those blue peanutty things. They cook up proteins that go back into the nucleus where they are reassembled into baby viruses and then out. All right, let's, let's pause it there. Um, so what were those ribosomes they were just showing? What were they making? What do all ribosomes make? Proteins. Right, so the organelles called ribosomes, right, make proteins. Right, so there's a little piece of review there. They make proteins. And what was the virus using our ribosomes for? To make more To make more of viruses, right? Um, yeah, it mutates them, right? So it alters them, right? So as part of that, right, so the organelle ribosomes make proteins, comma, right? And the viruses use our ribosomes, right? The viruses use our ribosomes. The viruses use our ribosomes to make more copies of themselves. So they're having your body do all the work. All right. And before I continue, initially they should remember that virus entered and then like opened up. What were, what were those little yellow spirals that were flying out of the virus into the nucleus of the cell? Anybody? Carries genetic information? Yeah. It was their DNA, right? So the viral DNA entered into the nucleus and reprogrammed the nucleus of this cell. All right, let's continue on. Um, and the question, of course, the, the question was, Given how fast viruses can replicate, why is it they don't just kill us on the spot? They go, they get covered up, and head to the surface where they get new keys, and then boom, here they come. This is an eruption of virus after virus after virus after only one virus entered the cell. 
But how many came out? Well, millions. Millions. So if one virus can produce a million babies and do it again and again and again, how come this guy doesn't just drop dead? I don't know, in like 10 minutes? Well, because you have about 100 trillion cells. I see. So a million viruses is just a drop in the bucket when you have 100 trillion cells. But anyway. Remember, you do have your own immune system, which when it sees a virus, usually kills it. So while the virus does multiply fast, with any luck, your immune system will work just a little faster. So, yes, viruses, all viruses want to spread, that's what they do, but most of the time we do keep them in check. Most of the time. Um, let's have a nice little review moment 
here. It's a good chance for us to make sure we all know what we're doing here in this lovely world of biology. All right, so Catalina, um, could you tell me what do we call a cell that's DNA is not in a nucleus? Its DNA is just kind of floating around in the cytoplasm. Bact archaea bacteria are like this, and U bacteria are like this. We talked about the two different types of karyotes. This question appear, has appeared on every MCAS since the dawn of MCAS. So we need to know that you know it. So organisms that their DNA is not inside a nucleus. All right, um, since Catalina does not know it, we need to shout it at her because this is always on the MCAS and if she wants to, you know, pass the ninth grade, she needs to know it. So what we're gonna do on the count of three, on the count of three, we're, those who know it are gonna shout it out. So one, two, three. Wow. Maybe go to the Indian instructions properly. You're going to yell it out. I want to hear it super extra double loud. I got One, two, three. We don't know it. Prokaryotes! Excellent. Prokaryotes. Um, you super crazy extra double. If you didn't know this right now off the top of your head, please write in your notes immediately. If an organism is not a nucleus, it is a prokaryote. It might folks, it, no, that's totally necessary. You might remember, Jerome, that, or, uh, sorry. Actually, it was wicked. Wait, <laughs> there's a story. There's a story here. I've been calling him Jihad for the past two weeks for some reason. And now, for some reason, I've inverted it. So, there we go. He sits in that same chair as you. So, <laughs> Sure, come on up here. Um, yeah. Right, so yeah, like, um, anyhow, right? We covered that in chapter three and four, and it's always on the MCAT. We need to absolutely super extra double no. No nucleus, prokaryote. Um, all right, so let's hope the next one goes a little better. All right, so, Marcos. Marcos. If you are a cell and you have a container for your DNA, you have a nucleus, you are a, instead of a prokaryote, you are a, all right, we're going to do the same thing? We're going to do the same thing? Those who know it, a little louder. You can't Rejoice? You Eukaryotes! All right, great. Great, so eukaryotes have a nucleus. DNA, so viruses are a little bit like our eukaryotes. They have their DNA in a capsule, in a kind of like a nucleus. Great. Um, this is the point of the course where we have to start really making sure that the foundational concepts are burned into our brain. Um, because I'll ask them over and over again on all our tests. They'll be on the mid-year, they'll be on the final, they'll be on the end cast. Um, all right, so let's move along. Um, viral envelope. We're going to do that in green. Verde. So there's this action and this action. 
The one where things are coming apart or the one where things are coming together? Together. 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 Apart. Oh, we've got some together. discrepancies in the room. It is together. When we fuse Boy. things, Boy. we combine <laughs> them. Right? Fusion combines things. Right? And fission cuts them. And we'll talk more about that in Chapter 10. Um, Plague rule and membrane fusion, cell entry. But if the virus doesn't have the right proteins to combine with the cell membrane, it can always dig its way in. So it might form a channel. It might burrow its way through. Right, so um, viruses are very aggressive about getting to your cells, right? They need your ribosomes to make more of themselves. So the only way that they can spread and develop is with your cellular machinery. All right, um, next up in red, we're talking about the pins and tails of our virus. And can someone just glance at the whole definition and tell me what they notice about this definition versus the one we just had? It's the same thing. So um, you, you can abbreviate, but the main parts you want to walk away with, right, is that the pins and tails grab onto the cell and inject the DNA, right? So we've got grabbing and fusing, grabbing and fusing. Um, now, we've only talked about four viral parts. Um, we've only talked about four viral parts, but how many of the parts are just about the virus getting into you? So of the four parts we talked about, how many of the four parts are just about the virus getting into your cell? They're on the screen right now. Out of four, two of them, 50% of the virus's structure is just about entering into your cell, right? So that gives you an idea of how important it is to the virus to burrow inside of you. All right, so um, as mentioned, we are going to make these magnificent viral models Right, where we are going to uh, create a virus for you to have, love, and to hold for the rest of your life. Um, all right, so what, what my fine scholars need to make this model happen um, and to know joy and happiness in their life. All right, so they need um, you need two blues. You need two blues. One pink one yellow, and one green. Uh -oh. Big trouble here. Um, so two blues, one pink, one yellow, one green. Um, someone's at the back right now because they were 